Today in the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, Alex Kappa drops in and gives us a lot of knowledge. Alex Kappa is a big-time player at the right guard position for the Cincinnati Bengals. He is a downhill physical run blocker. He will maul you in the running game, and he's an excellent pass protector. He's got really good feet, outstanding lateral movement, change of direction. His footwork and his hand placement are as good as anybody, and it's going to be exciting to see how he plays the right guard position. New center, new right guard, new right tackle. How quickly will they be able to come together and form a cohesive unit? I think sooner rather than later. I think it's going to happen very quickly, and like Alex says during the podcast, it's going to take a lot of work. You know, it doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. It takes work. And these guys are all ready to work. Alex Kappa, huge addition to the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And we are in our magnificent studio as always. And our special guest today is a mauler, a glass eater, as Bengals offensive line coach Frank Pollock <laughs> likes to say. None other than Alex Kappa. And Alex, I noticed you shaking your head there, man. You what what do you think when you hear? Those those terms for your style of play. You you are a very physical football player. There's no doubt. I just play football, dude. I just play football. You know how it goes. I hear you. I hear you. But uh, in in Frank Pollock's world, there's nothing more impressive than a glass eater. You know, I mean? that's that's a guy that's playing playing it at the, at the, at the highest level. Watching you on tape, though, you are a finisher, man. I mean, you you don't just want to block people. You want to, you know, take them to the ground, put them over a pile, whatever whatever the case may be. Uh, you, you're trying to make a statement at all times, aren't you? I don't know. I think that's just the way football is played. I don't try to do uh, anything extra, anything chippy. I'm not really that guy. I just play hard, and um, that's how I've always played. That's how I was taught to play. So I don't really look at it like anything extra or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Let, let's go back to your to your early years um, playing high school football, mm. Dub, Dublin, California. Let's see what kind of research you've done, Dave. Talk to me. <laughs> I just wanted what what else? What other ath, athletic uh, endeavors did you participate in besides football in your in your high school career? I was a baseball player growing up. Really? So, um, yeah, I started baseball at five. That was kind of like what I did my whole life. Um, so I did that all the way through high school, and then what position? Mainly catcher. Um, I was a little leaner back in the day, you know. I was spry back there. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I mainly played baseball, and then when I, I started playing football, when I got to high school, so my freshman year was my first year playing football. My dad had to convince me to do it, um, and then I really enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Did you not play football until your freshman year because? I mean, I couldn't play until my freshman year in high school because I was always bigger than the weight limits, you know, and I could never play organized football. I just played pickup football, and I was a baseball player, catcher as well. Nice. I played, I played uh, baseball and basketball and all the other sports and then, you know, played football, organized football. First time I put, you know, pads on really was freshman year in high school. What, was your situation the same or – was it no, different? it wasn't a weight deal. I wasn't that big growing up. I was always, like, tall, but I wasn't that big. Uh, uh -huh. It was just – I think I was only allowed to play one sport or my dad was like, pick a sport, you know, and I just always loved baseball, and so I just kept doing that. Yeah, yeah. So um, were you, when you started playing football your freshman year, obviously raw, who was the guy, who was a mentor, who was the first guy that taught you the fundamentals, the ABCs of football that you can remember that really made an impact on you? My head coach my freshman year was uh, Bill Bronca. And he, uh, so he was my first head coach and he was an offensive lineman at, uh, he played for the university of Nevada. Ah. So, um, I think I could be wrong. Maybe they were like division one double a when he played there or something that could be wrong, but he, he played there. Um, and so he was kind of the first one I would say. Oh, and you play, play, uh, through your, your high school career and then you get, uh, rec recruited to go to Humboldt state. 
you are the last player at Humboldt State to get drafted because Humboldt State doesn't have football anymore, right? Unless they bring it back. Maybe I, I could hope. A guy could hope, you know? I hear you. But they I did mean, one year after I left, and then they cut the program. Yeah, but so the last guy to get drafted, and mm -hmm. drafted in the third round, by the way, pretty high draft pick. Um, I think I think I recall reading there only been 11 guys drafted from Humboldt State, I think. You're one of 11. I don't think that much. It could be. I, uh, that sounds high to me, but it could be. Really? Okay. And uh, what was it like on draft day, and, and why Humboldt State out of high school? It was my only offer. Is the really? answer? Yeah. Um, my only offer. They told me they give me four thousand bucks a year to play there. I was like, all right, I'll do that. It'll cover some of my tuition. So you're um, a late bloomer. Yeah, I played um, high school. I played tight end and tackle, so I was kind of like a small tackle and a little bit slow tight end. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I was like two hundred forty pounds when my when I was coming out of high school. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought I think I should have got a little more credit coming out, but yeah. there's nobody uh, nobody recruiting me. Yeah. So I'll tell you, a lot of people miss because if you're playing tight end and can you know play the tackle, you, you've got athletic ability now, and it shows up. I mean, your feet are really sweet now. You you can you got some lateral movement. Your feet are outstanding. Um, watching you in pass protection, and you know with talked about this uh before with 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 Lyman in any athletic endeavor that you're doing anything it starts with your feet and ends with your hands and your feet and hands are really good I mean uh your pass protection and and you come downhill in the running game I mean uh, you, your athleticism athleticism they missed on that yeah you're right I mean I can't believe that uh Humboldt State was was the only opportunity and and it wasn't a full scholarship as such right you're saying it was a partial yeah, they didn't do full scholarships at home. Um, they were really yeah. limited. So I appreciate it. First of all, I trained it a lot. Um, but but yeah, at home they didn't do full scholarships. So I was getting like maybe half my tuition covered. And then after a couple of years, they were like, yeah, maybe we'll bump up you to full tuition. So I got full tuition my last couple of years. How about that? That is awesome. Yeah. So when you were playing there, though, was it, were you just toying with people? I mean, for you to get drafted in the third round of the NFL, you must have dominated people you were playing against. Yeah, it was it was a little easier, I would say, than what I'm doing now. Um, a little easier, a lot more relaxed, a lot more fun. Um, but the good thing was I had other offensive linemen there that took it really seriously like I did. So I don't know if it's like that Division two everywhere, but definitely where we were at, we were training hard. We took it very seriously. Um, and so I developed a lot while I was there. Is there anybody that you played against that went to the next level uh, from your Division two days at, on defense? Um, the couple guys like went to camps, like went to uh, rookie mini camps, and that was about it. I don't think I played anyone. Um, that's not true. There's there was a linebacker at Azusa Pacific who plays for. Oh my god, I'm I'm blanking now. It's a, I think he plays for the the Falcons, but he was only there for a year and then he transferred division one. So it was like, uh, I didn't play him a whole lot. So there's a couple here and there, but not a, not a ton, no defensive yeah. linemen. Right. Right. What'd you study? I studied kinesiology. Really? Do you want to be a doctor or what? No, no, I don't know about that. I thought maybe a strength coach, um, ah. but I don't know. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I had a great strength coach and he kind of pointed me in that direction and was a serious mentor to me and I enjoyed it. So you you go to you go there as a 240 pound freshman and how big did you get how how much did you develop your body at Humboldt State? Well, I redshirted my first year and then so by that second year when I was playing I was like in the 280s probably low 280s. How about that? Um, yeah, I put on a belly pretty quick, uh, <laughs> but we were eating a lot and training a lot, so it, it went on pretty quick. Man, and you're you're what now about 305, 310 somewhere in there? Maybe a little heavier. <laughs> yeah, like a little heavier than that. Yeah. So what's your playing weight? I mean, what 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 do you feel comfortable at? Uh early on in my career, I was like more like 305. And then the last couple of years I've been more like 315. So honestly, uh if you if you were to say how big a transition was that when you your first training camp you go to with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from Humboldt State? 
what was that like, the transition and the step up in the level of athlete that you're going against? How, how difficult was that to adjust or did you adjust pretty freely? No, I, th- I think it took – I felt like it took me my full year. Like my second year in the league, I felt way more comfortable, way better. Um, that first training camp, it was – when I was in there versus Gerald McCoy, I had some rude awakenings. Um <laughs> But he's the kind of player who, as good as he is in the game, he's even better in practice. Like, you know the guys I'm talking about. Um, yeah. I had some rude awakenings my rookie training camp for sure. <laughs> Gerald McCoy. Mine was Mike Reed. Um, and Mike Reed was a guy that played All-American at Penn State. He was also a concert pianist. And he's he's oh. a, a songwriter. He wrote Ron, Ronnie Millsap hits. He's This guy's a talented guy. And I'm telling you what, Alex, this dude – was so quick. I thought I closed my eyes. I'm like, how the hell did he get from here to there so quick? He was, yeah. I mean, lightning quick. And my uh, offensive line coach when I was a rookie said, you know, I bet you feel like if you put a hand on him, you hit a grand slam, don't you? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, this guy, man, he was like, it was unbelievable. And one-on-one pass rush drills, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to block anybody in the National Football League. He goes, don't worry. This guy's about as he's the quickest there is. And, and, and he was, man, this guy was explosively quick, but it, it is, it's, it's, it's amazing how good the players are at that, uh, at that next level, but you've made an unbelievable adjustment. And here, here's, here's some, here's a number that, you know, as a former lineman that I really respect last year, 1,182 snaps, one penalty, one penalty. You that know, is- this, what was the penalty? Cause I don't, I could be wrong. I don't think I had one last year. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What was the call and who called it? That dude must feel like crap that he wrecked your a spotless wreck. I mean, was it was it a false start? It wasn't well, a whole to be game. honest. And I could be wrong. Maybe someone will fact check me after this. I don't think I had one last year. Wow. So I'm a little uh I'm like, dude, who who attributed this penalty to me? I could be wrong. Someone will probably post the quote later, but um someone will have to prove that to me. I thought I had zero last year. That's unbelievable, though, to have the 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 focus and the discipline to go 1,182 snaps and literally no penalties, one penalty. What that, that's that's amazing for your hands not to be in the wrong place or get sloppy or, you know, not to brain cramp on a on a snap count or whatever, dude. That's 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 phenomenal. It really is. I appreciate it. The holding. I feel like after a while, you you, you know when you're going to get called for a hold. So like, I try to just let go. Sometimes it's tough, but I feel like most of the time people know. They, they get upset after, but you know when you're going to get called for a hold. <laughs> I agree. I agree with that. Uh, and the other thing, in, in 2020, go through a whole season, no quarterback sacks allowed. Huh? Pretty good, man. I Pretty good. It. I definitely have some uh, – that's not a solo job, that's for sure. So um, definitely a lot of help some luck involved and anytime you have some stat like that um but yeah that's cool so when you first come to the national football league and our you know i remember as a rookie having a, a very strong teacher as an offensive line coach was like a dream come true and i got one did you have one yeah i've had two two good ones with warhop and uh harold goodwin but really i felt like it was the players like i've had a great group of players in tampa that really helped bring me up um veterans and guys that weren't as older but uh, had a lot of experience i feel like that really helped me a lot guys like who give give me uh give me a couple of names of guys that kind of like took you under their wing and said man this this kid looks like he's got some ability here i'm going to try to help this guy so i mean obviously i played next to jensen my whole three years and then um the other two were, would be demar dotson who was a veteran there when i when i my first year starting he was the right tackle and i think it was like his 10th year uh, so he obviously had the experience and then ali marpet helped me out a lot i think uh he obviously had a great career and very smart guy and kind of thinks about the game in a similar way are you surprised that he retired marpet no, I'm not surprised. He's a. I love when people have multiple priorities, and obviously, football is important to to me and to all of us. But it's not um, all of life, and it definitely takes a toll on you. Also, people don't realize how hard it is. Um, so, I got a lot of respect for anyone who's able to walk away on their own terms. So, would you consider yourself a technician? I mean, when I watch you, I I, I do. I, I look at you as somebody that 
is very aware of technique and is so technique sound and and really takes pride in you know repeating the same techniques over and over. I mean, but you'll change it up. I like when you flash your hands, you know, and and uh, and, and and mess with guys a little bit in that area. I mean, do you really is your do you uh, adjust your technique based on film study and what guys are trying to do against you? Obviously. Yeah, and I try to. I feel like the best way to go about it is when whether it's practice and off season, try to work on technique as much as you can. So during the game, you're not thinking about it because it's hard enough just playing, let alone thinking about your technique while you're playing. So I think that's really, you try to prepare the best you can. So when you're out there, you're just playing. So you're a Super Bowl champion and your quarterback in that Super Bowl championship season, Tom Brady, what is it about Tom Brady? I mean, this guy obviously has separated himself like nobody else has. Uh, Goat is very, <laughs> a very legitimate title. Mm -hmm. What is it about Brady? What, if you had to pick a couple of things, not just the fact that he could, first thing you have to do is be able to go out in the field and play, and he can obviously do that. What about the intangibles? What about What's an intangible or two that makes Tom Brady so unique? Well, it's the preparation. His preparation was like no one I've, I've seen before, and it's not only is he prepared, but he's making sure everyone else around him is prepared. And I think people talk about like making people around you better, but like, that's what he he was making sure, like, not only do I know what I'm doing, but I'm making sure everybody knows what they're doing. I think that really is the key so you're all on the same page. Is that something that you do as an offensive lineman? Um, are, are you, like, not only concerned with your tunnel vision assignment, but are you a guy that is a big picture guy and you want to have an idea what each guy on either side of you is doing and why they're doing it and all that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I'm, I like communicating a lot. So whoever I'm next to, I like talking to them so that way – there's no questions about what we're doing. I want us to all be on the same page for sure. So to your left is going to be Ted Karras, and to your right is going to be Collins, two two guys that you haven't you know taken snaps with. How long do you think it'll take before you guys, because you're all experienced NFL players, but it's not like you can just throw guys in there and, and you know the next day expect them to go out and play at a Super Bowl level. There, there's a little bit of, of work that actually a lot of work that's going to have to be done a lot of reps but are you looking forward to that playing you know learning how uh to okay I, I know he likes to do this make sure i'm on the same level as him on this stunt and all those kind of things are you anxious to get that process started yeah and i think it's like i said it's a lot of communication especially early on when you haven't played with each other you got to be talking all the time so you know what they're thinking they know what you're thinking um yeah, you definitely can't just go out and play by yourself. It's going to be a lot of working together and a lot of seeing what he likes and what I like and uh, and making it all work together. What did you uh, What did you find out? I'm sure you did a little bit of research on Frank Pollock before you signed with the Cincinnati Bengals and find out maybe some things about him as an offensive line coach. What did What did your research show you about Frank Pollock? Um, I, to be honest, I don't know him that well yet, we, but we hung out a good amount when I was out there, um, started talking yeah. ball a little bit, and then obviously he played for a long time. So anytime you love that, you know, a coach that played who knows what it's like out there, knows the difference between the meeting room and the field. And um, so that should be great. And, and yeah, I'm excited for it. You know, I think that you, you with your footwork and your lateral movement and athleticism in that regard and, and the way you can – you know, use your hands, his outside zone running game. Um, it, it's, it's almost like the defense can't be right. I mean, if you guys, if it's executed the way it's supposed to be executed, defense is in trouble. I mean, if they, they're going to have to start guessing, you know, and, uh, you know, get them moving laterally and, and, uh, some cutback lanes and all those good things that go with it. And you you seem like a player that fits that perfectly the way you can, you know, get off to that next level, but make sure that the guy you're working with has full control, you know, of the down lineman and all those kind of things. Are you anxious to get involved in that type of schematic? I mean, Frank's the run game coordinator and that outside zone's a big deal to him. Yeah. And I mean, that's the same kind of mindset in that you have to work together in that sort of scheme. Like if everyone's not on the same page, if one person's angle is different or, or if the running back's angle is different, if you're not working with the running back, that is all about working the same angles working together. Um, so yeah, that's going to take a lot of work also. Do you consider yourself a more proficient run blocker 
more proficient pass blocker or equally a proficient in both? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me, dude. I'm just, no, you, I'm just trying to get better at everything, man. I'm just trying to uh, try to work on everything, try to be successful everywhere. And uh, it depends on the day. Sometimes you get a good day in a run game. Sometimes you got a good game in pass, bro. Right. In the opponent, right? I mean, <laughs> that really depends on the opponent, also. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, during during your your career so far, uh, it's somebody that you played against, uh, you know, in the regular season, playoffs, Super Bowl, whatever. That like a guy or two, man. When you were watching during the week during your prep, it's like, oh man, this this is gonna be a gonna bring the bu lunch bucket today, man. It's gonna every be day, oh, every uh, week. <laughs> They're all good. Three. You could play a team and they might be two and ten, and you're like, "Hey, their D line is freaking good, though, dude." <laughs> like there would be sometimes the coaches would be like, "Hey, we can't take these guys for granted." Like I don't care about the record. I'm like, I don't even know what their record is. I just see this D line getting off the rock. Like every every group is good. Yeah, it really is. I mean, when you're at that level, I mean, you're there for a reason. Uh, there, there's uh, there are no two ways about it. For young offensive linemen that are watching this right now. You know, looking at your situation, you didn't start playing football till your freshman year in high school, organized, you know, contact football, and and you go to a Division II school and, and still get drafted in the third round of the National Football League, have played successfully, and get a nice contract. Um, what do you tell them is the key to success? What do they need to do to live their dream like you lived yours? I think it's a lot of work and a lot of luck also. There's definitely some luck involved, some intangibles that not everybody has and stuff like that. But I think um, you have to kind of realize, like, what your goals are. Like, I've told kids, like, hey, if you just want to go play in college and have fun, like, that doesn't mean you have to play at the highest level possible. You don't have to go to freaking Alabama to just have fun in your college career. Right. If that is your goal, then you have to realize what sort of lifestyle – and choices you have to make to achieve that goal. Like if you truly want to be the best you can, then there's a certain lifestyle that lines up with those, what is with what is required to meet those goals. Um, and so I think it's all about what you want to do. Like if you want to be the best player you can possible, you have to make sacrifices in some areas. Uh, but if you just want to have fun, then you can just do that. And I played with a lot of guys at division two school who just were having fun and they worked out hard and all that. But um they knew they weren't going to the NFL and they were just having fun. And that's great. But uh, you definitely there's some sacrifices and lifestyle that has to be met if those are your goals. So when did you realize that you had a chance to go to the big show? And, uh, and, and what did you do differently to try to make sure you got there? Um, well, I think the first time I can remember was my sophomore year of high school. I bet this kid that I'll be playing in the NFL. And I think that was more just um, probably ignorance at that point. Right. Um, but then kind of as I went through Humboldt, my first O-line coach at Humboldt, um, he was like, dude, we got to get you to the league. Like my freshman year. And I was like, that sounds good to me. Like, let's do that. And then my strength coach had a really big impact on me. Um and then I talked about in the press conference, Taylor Boggs, who played at Humboldt and played in the NFL. And he was a big mentor for me. So it was kind of gradual, but pretty early on in Humboldt, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And then it was just taking stuff serious. I We had a high expectations in terms of the weight room at Humboldt. Like it was like, it maybe not like other schools where every single person was at every workout, but like the O-line, we were there all the time working. And then I was just things in terms of like we would have Sunday morning workouts. So I'm not going out Saturday night because we have a Sunday morning workout. So now I know Saturday I'm staying home and Friday night I'm not going out because we just worked out on Friday. So i got to recover from that workout. And you know what I mean? Like just stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are sacrifices that have to be made. I mean, there's no question about it. And uh, you know, it's, it's not, I remember my, uh, my first line coach uh, in the NFL is, is talked to us. My, uh, my, the first meeting, you know, we have our team meeting, we break up to our individual position groups, you know, and, and this guy was a pro bowl center for the San Francisco 49ers way back in the day when Y.A. Tittle was a quarterback with the 49ers before he went to the giants. And he goes, I'm here to tell you guys right now that this league isn't for everybody. And all you guys ain't making, 
so it's like whew, reality hits you right square in the face, you know. And uh, do do you do you set um, individual goals? I, I know it's hard for offensive line offensive linemen. We 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 live vicariously through the success of our skill guys, right? Or you have a quarterback that throws for five thousand yards like Brady does. You have a running back that rushes for twelve hundred or whatever, and two receivers that catch passes for a thousand each. It's like, wow, man, we must have done something right. I mean, right. is that is that how you live your football life, or do you have any any individual goals or things that motivate you to try to make you better on a on a week by week, year by year basis? I try to be more process oriented compared to just goals. Like I, I find it hard and. It just doesn't feel like authentic to myself to be like, this is what I want to accomplish and this is my only goal. I'm more just, I know I want to continue to get better and I know that requires work and that requires a process and I'm more just um, like stick like that. So how big of a factor was Joe Burrow, you know, being a young guy in the league but had such early success you know, taking his team to the Super Bowl in his second year after only having been able to play 10 games his rookie year due to injury. Um, you know, you played with the great Tom Brady. You know how important the quarterback position is. How big a factor was Burrow in your ultimate decision, Alex? Um, well, I didn't even – I hadn't even talked to him at the time. So it's it's uh, it's hard to know because you don't know – obviously you've seen him play, but you don't know what kind of guy he is, how, how the building is run, how everything like that. So – I really just wanted to go to a team that I knew was going to be good and I knew was going to be competitive. And obviously he's a big part of that. Um, but yeah, I'm still getting to know the guy. We found out a little bit now, but um, yeah. Right. So Brady, how easy was he to get to know and what makes him so unique as a leader? I mean, obviously you can see for a guy to play over 20 years at the level that he's still playing at his age, it's a, he's a freak, man. He's a freak in nature. But what is it about the intangibles that he has that make him such a unique leader? Yeah, like I said, the preparation is one thing. But then also, um, I don't know, he's a very authentic guy. He's not out there BSing anybody. And if if you, you're talking about a protection and he's not sure how he wants to pick it up yet, he'll say, I'm not sure. Let me get back to you. You know, like he's just very uh, – he's very true to himself. And I think people respect that a lot. What's the biggest thing you learned from your Super Bowl victory season at Tampa Bay that you can bring to Cincinnati with this young football team? What what kind of knowledge or what would you impart to them? They got there, they were right on the doorstep and they couldn't quite finish it. What what what, what can you bring as a as a leader that uh won a Super Bowl? You know, you got you got the ring. What can you tell the young guys? Yeah, I think a lot of it is um <laughs> Whoa, what kind of dog you got? She was in the backyard. She's a she's a Mastiff Pyrenees mix. Hello. Oh, baby. Yeah, she's a big dog. She doesn't like – she's nervous. <laughs> she's a big girl. Have key driver. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Super Bowl season. I would say um, just how – just the attention of detail, attention to detail, rather, that it requires. Um. Like we would be talking, like people, you're gonna lose reps. Everybody's gonna lose reps. I'm gonna lose reps. Joe's gonna make mistakes. Lyle is gonna make, you know what I mean? Like that happens. But if we're all on the same page mentally and we're all communicating the right way, then like that over the long haul is gonna set you up to be successful. Now I I can't talk to you without talking about your toughness. You know your pain tolerance. This is this is legendary stuff. You play with a broken arm. And and you tried to play with a broken leg. <laughs> yeah. How, how the heck? I mean, how do you how do you play with a broken arm? How do you how do you, you know, take that pain and put it away, and take it take us through both of those situations and how that all evolved and unfolded. And man, that's that's where Frank Pollock's like, this dude's a glass eater. Well, the thing is, like, I'm the opposite of like the prototypical like tough guy. Like, I'm not the like old school grind it out like i don't care if you're hurt like that's just not my mindset at all right but i just i mean i didn't know my arm was broken when i was out there playing i knew it hurt but like oh <laughs> uh, i thought i just thought i could keep going and i did okay it was definitely wasn't my best game with a broken arm i'll say that for sure um but so yeah you're, play, you're playing right guard was it your right your outside arm or your inside arm it was my left arm your inside arm 
Yeah. Did, did I, they start to figure it out and start taking that inside on you a bunch? Not really, but the first, so I threw a cut. And then the guy tried to hurdle me, so I like threw my arm up, and he kicked kicked my forearm. Um, and then the next play was like an inside zone my way, and you know you got to kind of use your inside arm to like dig him out on an inside zone, and it did not work at all. <laughs> um, yeah, it, was, it was okay. I wouldn't recommend it for sure. Um, but yeah, just I, I don't know. You, a lot of guys are in pain, you know, when when you're out there, and a lot of guys are hurting. And you don't want to be the guy who's like, oh, I can't go. And then you come to the sideline and they're like, oh, you have a bruise a bruise on your arm like that you can't play football. You know, like you don't really know what's going on while you're out there. Yeah, the adrenaline, ankle, adrenaline's like, strong, man. Adrenaline's a powerful thing. I know. You? My ankle, I, I thought I just sprained my ankle. And I was like, well, I've seen guys play with a sprained ankle. And um, that one I couldn't do, but I tried. Uh, yeah, because you don't know what's going on. You just know you're in pain and you know – there's probably other guys on your team out there fighting through pain and you want to still fight through and help them win. And that's, that's really it. And that was in the playoff game uh, this year against Washington, right? Where you had the broken ankle last year. Yeah. Yeah. This past yeah. season. Yeah. So at what stage of the game was that? That was right before halftime. So it was a two minute drill. Um, got hurt. Try. And then that's the other thing is during a two minute drill, you don't want to take a timeout because you have no, you can't take an injury timeout. So you try to get up and then I couldn't. And that's why I went in for a halftime and got it taped up and everyone's like, are you good? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm good. <laughs> and then I went out that I was not good, but. All right. So what is it that you like, love best about football, Alex? What, what, what is it that, uh, that floats your boat the most about playing in the national football league? Hmm. I think just the process of all the work it takes in the off season and the work it takes during the week to make sure everyone's on the same page and um, that collaboration with your teammates between you're putting in work and they're putting in work to make sure you're both taking care of each other. Um, I really think that's, that's the best part for me. You know, it seems like you're a guy that has, you know, multiple interests and you, you, your high school and college careers are on the West coast you go to Florida to start your NFL career. Now here you are in the Midwest. So you're seeing the whole country basically uh, by playing the game of football, a good part of the country anyway. Are you excited about uh, spending some time here in the Midwest in Cincinnati, Ohio? Yeah, it'll be fun. It's going to be a lot different. I've only lived in warm weather climates my whole life. So <laughs> I always tell my wife I want to move somewhere where it's cold, and now I got my wish. So we'll see if I'll do that part of it. Um when, when I got to shovel snow in the morning, but I'm looking forward to it for sure. Well, we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you play as well. Looking forward to, to training camp and, and, uh, it, it's, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, th this offense, there's no question that, that the skill positions quote skill positions, I think offensive line is maybe the most skilled position in all of football, but like the, the quarterback receivers, running backs, I mean, you got some, you got some players, got some guys, man. And uh, this, this old line, a lot of new faces, and it's going to be exciting to see it all come together. And fans are, fans are pumped up, man. They're, they're ready. They're ready for the Bengals to, to uh, make another run in this division. What do, you, what do you know about the AFC North? Have you, uh, have you dug into the AFC North very much? Well, the AFC North starting to change a little bit. So, I, I don't know. It's, I think it's an evolving division especially this year right would you agree with that yeah i i agree i think uh i, I think it's the afc north and the afc west man in, you know with what's going on in free agency and uh you know if everybody stays healthy i mean i know baltimore suffered a lot of injuries last year and you know cleveland now look at the look at the roster that they've got now that they got the sean watson at the quarterback position they got a roster i mean it's this league is tough, man. And like you said, everybody's good in this in this National Football League. There's no doubt. Yeah, and it's going to be a – we should have a good chance, but it's going to take a lot of work, and there's a long ways to go before all that. Um, but, yeah, if we put in the work and, and we're all on the same page, it should be should be good. So are you, are you planning on uh, – are, are you going to come to Cincinnati to, to begin your workouts and before even OTAs and that sort of thing? Or what, what's your th thought there? Have you even decided yet? Uh, yeah, we're still figuring it out. I'll probably be out there a little bit before OTAs and, uh, I don't know. I got to find a place to live out there. So I'll, I'll be out there soon. And your body feels pretty good. You've already in a pretty good recovery mode from last year. Everything's good. 
Oh yeah, 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 I feel good. I didn't have to play all the way to the Super Bowl like like the rest of these guys did. So I've had a couple more weeks than they did. Twenty seven years old, right? Twenty seven. Yes, sir. Right in the prime of the career, man. Right in the sweet spot of the career is Alex Kappa. Can't wait to watch you play that right guard position. That'll be fun. I appreciate you. I'm excited, Dave. Thanks for your time. Appreciate everything uh, you've given us today. Good deal. Thanks for having me. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you got to get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.